past few years, cyber policy issues have electrified debate in Latin America. High-profile stories on issues like cybersecurity, surveillance and net neutrality have become a prominent feature of media across the region. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of the cyber policy landscape in Latin America, where relevant policy issues are being discussed, and how to engage in these debates. Let's start with a bit of context. Many countries in Latin America went through dictatorships in the 20th century and are still relatively young democracies. But the last few decades have seen the rise of strong human rights movements all over the region. And while the strength of civil society varies widely from country to country, often reflecting other inequalities, these movements often work across borders facilitated by shared languages. Increasingly, human rights defenders are engaging with cyber policy issues, which are quickly rising up the political agenda in Latin America. With over half of its population now online, the region has experienced widespread economic and social development, fostered by greater connectivity. At the same time, dependency on internet-based platforms and services has created new security and crime-related risks. In the last few years, the region has spearheaded many pioneering cyber policy initiatives, the Brazilian Civil Rights Framework for the Internet, known as the Marco Civil, the Chilean Net Neutrality Law, and the Net Mundial Multi-Stakeholder Statement. But with growing political instability, more needs to be done to ensure a human rights respecting approach to cyber policies in the region. So what are the key cyber policy issues for human rights defenders in Latin America? Let's start with cybersecurity. As we saw earlier in the series, this is an elastic term which can cover a range of issues, from cybercrime to technical standards, capacity building to data protection. Across the region, concerns have grown over criminal or malicious activity in cyberspace. This has sparked efforts across the region to develop stronger cybersecurity frameworks and measures and increase cyber capabilities. According to the ITU, six countries in the region have adopted national cybersecurity strategies, and at least 11 others are currently in the process of developing them. This has also led to a wave of new legislation and bills, particularly on cybercrime. Bringing legislation up to date is, of course, important, but in the absence of proper scrutiny from a human rights perspective, these laws could be used to justify measures which undermine freedom of expression and privacy, like legal threats against journalists, curbs on encryption, and mass surveillance. Civil society groups have pointed to the use of controversial monitoring tools, including Finn Fisher in nine countries as evidence of a growing surveillance culture in the region. But human rights defenders are resisting this trend. In Paraguay, for example, a data retention bill introduced in 2014 was defeated thanks to a landmark campaign mounted by TEDIC, a Paraguayan human rights group which reframed discussions to focus on metadata and privacy. As well as cybersecurity, a number of other cyber policy issues have captured the attention of policymakers in the region. Over the last few years, many countries in Latin America have made important steps forward in adopting strong net neutrality provisions. In fact, Chile was the first country in the world to pass a law recognizing net neutrality. The looming ratification of the Trans-Pacific Partnership means intellectual property is likely to remain a hot topic. This agreement is likely to open challenging debates on a range of human rights, including freedom of expression, the right to information and privacy. Data protection is also a key area of concern. Most countries in the region already have constitutional protections on personal data. Some have also adopted strong data protection laws, while others are in the process of revising theirs or creating new ones. Norms and processes established on these issues, and others like spectrum management and technical standards, can have an indirect impact on cybersecurity and cybercrime and need the scrutiny and attention of human rights defenders. For human rights defenders, the obvious first point of engagement is the national level where cyber policies, laws and frameworks have the greatest impact. As we've seen in the case of Paraguay, human rights defenders can engage effectively at the legislative level, either by working with legislators or by challenging decisions in national courts. 
National cybersecurity strategies are another way in. These already exist in several countries in Latin America, but are missing or still in development in others. At the development stage, there are often public consultations, which offer a route for human rights defenders to get involved. But cyber issues don't respect national borders. Addressing them requires coordination at the regional and global level, with the involvement of different stakeholder groups. Today, most regional and sub-regional forums and intergovernmental organizations in Latin America have embraced cyber cyber policy issues as part of their mandates. Of these, the organization of American states is particularly important. As a regional intergovernmental organization comprising 35 member states, it plays a central role in cybersecurity and cybercrime policy across the Americas. Three main bodies within it deal with these issues. There's REMHA, a legal and judicial cooperation mechanism which brings together prosecutors and justice ministers from across the region. Most issues related to cybercrime are dealt with in this forum. Human rights defenders can engage with its work via think tanks like CEHA or through their national ministries of justice. The Inter-American Committee Against Terrorism is another important OAS body. Its cybersecurity program works to build the capacity of its member states and promote cooperation among computer security incident response teams. And the Inter-American Telecommunication Commission is the forum responsible for telecommunications modernization and coordination across OAS countries. Decisions made here on issues like roaming charges and net neutrality can have a knock-on effect for human rights. Becoming an associate member is prohibitively expensive, but human rights defenders can engage by reaching out to sympathetic civil society and technical actors who are already involved as associate members or observers. Bodies dealing with technical issues are another important part of the landscape. For instance, the Latin America and Caribbean Network and Information Center, one of the five global regional internet registries, allocates IP addresses in the region, provides technical services to regional internet service providers, and plays a role in coordinating regional CSERTs. Human rights defenders can get involved by contacting the forum's technical committees and taking part in the initiatives supported by its regional fund for digital innovation. Legal routes are also open at the regional level. Here, the Inter-American Human Rights Commission is the key mechanism. As a human rights defender, you can use it to bring cases to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, which has the power to enforce sanctions on countries. Its rapporteur on freedom of expression is also an important channel. You can ask them for an audience, request intervention on specific issues, and feed into their reports, which cover a wide range of cyber policy issues. And out of the many non-binding forums in the region, the Latin American Internet Governance Forum is a place where human rights defenders can learn about emerging cyber policy issues, exchange best practice, and develop collaborations with other stakeholders. These are some of the most important forums dealing with cyber issues at the regional level. But norms and frameworks developed at the global level have an impact too. For instance, Panama and the Dominican Republic have already adopted the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, and a number of other countries, including Argentina, Chile and Peru, are considering adoption. Once ratified, accession to the convention can significantly shape national legislation. The global normative landscape is important. While not binding in the way that international treaties or national laws are, outcomes of discussions at the UN Group of Governmental Experts, the London Process or the International Telecommunication Union can have significant implications for regional and national approaches and policies. Because cyber norms are still in the early stages of development, there is room to shape them. However, many of these spaces are intergovernmental and only open to governments. Engaging in them through your country's representatives could be a good starting point. But if you don't have direct access, finding allies who do in the technical community, the private sector and non-governmental organisations could be a way forward. Music